If I had to choose between Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, what would it be? Uh, it's hard. I would definitely, like, Snapchat gets to omit for sure. But if it's between Twitter or Instagram, I have to do Twitter. Yeah, Twitter's, Twitter's like, it's like school again, you know? Like, I'm learning something new every day. Even if I'm not tweeting, I'm just lurking, you know? And just reading everything. That's where, I, that's where I get my news updates from, you know, sports, music, you know, Instagram, it's just, it's just all photos, you know, Twitter, you get like the vines from like the deep, dark depths of like, you know, the circles that you would never get a hold of. So I'll definitely go with Twitter. Do I prefer festivals or concerts when I'm attending them? I would probably say festivals just cause there's a lot more going on and there's a lot more people there, so it's you, you, chances are I'll probably run into like you know ten of my friends at any given festival. A concert's more concentrated on like a separate artist, and if the concert sucks, and that's gonna be a brutal two hours, I tell you that much. I've been through a lot of bad concerts, but not the best experience. Whose music am I currently listening to? Um, Mick Jenkins. Um, he put out a mixtape recently that's that has carried me out through tour. Um, Solange. For sure, um, 21 Savage, Kodak, Ray Schremer, shout out to my boys, Sway and Jimmy. Um, my boy, Larry June. Uh, there's there's a lot, you know, um, Migos. Um, I don't know, it just, uh, I listen to a lot of music and it's pretty, it's pretty hard to say, but you know, those are a few for sure. Which city is leading music right now? Um, I'm gonna be biased and say Toronto. You know, just on on both aspects, you know, in front of the boards and behind the boards, you know, our producers are pretty much killing it, you know, from Boy Wanda to Seven Thomas, even Murder Beach is killing it right now. Um, and then you have artists like, you know, Drake, Abel, Tori doing his thing as well, um, myself. Yeah, so I would have to say Toronto. Something that I have to have on me when I'm on tour a neck pillow. A neck pillow is definitely clutch because you know times get hard in that van. Um, my, I need like an extra battery pack from for my phone because those van rides get get pretty hectic. Um, I don't really need like an like an like a an object per se. Like a lot of shoes would be good, you know. I'm very content with like having like a good pair like every other day or so. Um, a lot of Hennessy, you know, it would get you through a lot. Uh, what else? I'm not really sure, cause like most most of my days are a blur. I do the show, we get drunk after, and then the next day I'm pretty much sleeping. So it's like I don't really need a lot, you know. I'm a pretty simple guy. Who or what inspires me? Um, my city, you know, Toronto definitely is, plays a big inspiration to everything that I do. Um, my mom. You know, she's she's a, a big focal point in a lot of my music. I get a lot of a, a lot of things that she says. I'll take it and put it into my songs. You know, and um, she's definitely inspired a lot of records just by giving me her guidance and stuff like that. Um, my little brothers and my little sister for sure, um, <clears throat> and just like everybody else coming up. You know, like all all like the young guys that are doing it and trying to push push the genre forward and make it a, a better, you know, listening experience for everybody else, you know? I think in like the past, like, like the past few years, all the, all the, like, the new rappers have done a pretty impressive job by like cracking the mainstream and making sure like hip hop is like that number one genre. So, yeah. What rules do I have for myself when I'm in the studio? Um, <clears throat> usually like to have the phone off so there's no outside distractions. Um, because it, it gets very distracting when you're like in your zone and you're constantly like getting a text or you're, like you're, if your group chat's popping off, that's the worst time because you know, the jokes are flying off left and right. You kind of don't want to feel left out. So I just put on airplane mode, um, try to be as zen as possible. I need to have at least like six candles lit for sure. Um, I don't really, my sessions are kind of different sometimes because like I don't really like to drink that much or like smoke that much when I'm in the studio. I have like a clear head, but, but sometimes I do just depending on like how me and my producer are. Um, but yeah, just not a lot of people either. 
I can't have a studio full of like 60, 60 extras that are just there doing nothing and not providing any any sort of like, you know, uh, positive input, you know? So yeah, I need to have it just like me, myself, the engineer, maybe somebody else just to like, you know, break the ice a little bit, but like if it's plus plus five more, can't do it. I'm just like, get me out of here. Oh, the craziest experience I've had with the fans so far, there's been quite a few. Um, I had these, I forgot what city I was in, but there's these three guys that um, they like managed to finesse their way backstage and were banging on my dressing room. And then they were like, jazz, we're, we're like the biggest fans of all But This is like after the show and they were fully sweaty. And it was just like, you know, after the show, it's like, you like, you can shake hands, kiss babies. But then, you know, once I'm finished that, you know, I get a little hand sanitizer just to make sure I'm clean. Cause you know, that that's how you get sick. And um, they came back after I finished all that. And then they are like, we want you to sign our chest because we want to get it tatted on us. And I'm like, are you guys sure about this? And they were like, yeah. They were like, yeah, for sure. So I signed it and then I'm like, by all means, it's your life. And the next day, they like sent me a, a picture on Instagram and they definitely got it signed on the chest. I mean, like, <laughs> props to them. You know, I, I personally, would, would just think that over a little bit, but they definitely did it right after they left because they were wasted. I mean, I'll work harder to make sure that, you know, that signature is worth a lot one day, you know, no but pressure. no pressure, <laughs> but yeah. That's, that's just one of them. There's so many, but one that comes to mind is definitely that. Do I feel like having an education is important in the music game? I mean, <clears throat> it can go either way, you know, like you can be like fully trained and you know, like you know music like perfectly but then that doesn't really translate to like everybody else you know like there's like there's like a genius to like some people that like aren't aren't like fully trained with music you know like say like Chief Keef you know like I definitely did not go to school for it but you know like that like raw and uncut like spirit within them you know to just like cut through the records and like translate so heavy you know and like I look at it like that like you can like know how to hit notes and like scales and all that shit like percussion like whatever you want to talk about but then you have like the like the guys who just follow their gut you know and just like go in and, and like whatever they feel like they put it on record so like it just kind of kind of goes hand in hand what's been the biggest struggle so far while on this journey <clears throat> there's been a lot uh you know, like when you start putting on music, like you like do it because you love music and then like, you know, everyone in, in like your close circle, then your city starts to find out that it's cool. And then the world starts to catch on. And then you have to start touring and you have to be away from home a lot. And then it's like, you're constantly, you know, progressing in your life. And then like you're like, you like scroll through like your Instagram feed and it's like, people from back home are still doing the same thing. And then like when you go home, it's like, you want to be that same person, but then everyone just automatically, like that energy just changes and they feel like you've changed because you know, you're out there following your dreams. And you know, some people aren't that fortunate enough to do so, you know? So that's like been like one of the biggest struggles for me to, to just like maintain those two lives, you know? And it gets, it, it gets scary sometimes because it's, it's like, if, if your close ones back home don't really like understand what you're going through, then like who else will, you know? And then that's when you have like, <clears throat> have like friends that are in, in the industry that, you know, we talk about all the time that, that it's like, we, we can't do like normal things anymore, you know? But I mean, this, this is the life we chose. So you can't really like regret anything. You just gotta, you know, keep pushing, hoping that people will catch on. I'm Jazz Cartier and now you know.